Well, hello, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and I'm here with John from Off the Wall Hockey, the GOAT. I call him the GOAT. This is great. It's freaking awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you came here, John, to talk about this series we're doing on every team, what they did in the offseason, and how that projects for their future. Uh, we have done a few of these already together, and it's been a lot of fun. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here. I think we only got three or four more teams to go. But today we're going to talk about the San Jose Sharks, who had um, not a lot of movement in their offseason, but um, they do have a very interesting lineup. Uh, so we're going to get into that, some of the moves that they make and made and uh, what that may project for them as they go into what will be a shortened season with um, – some maybe a little bit of depth issues ace john what do you figure about that yeah i definitely looking at this san jose roster um depth is definitely a concern for this team particularly on the back end where you have so much money tied up in brent burns eric carlson and mark edward vlasic that they really don't have much after that on the defensive side and then even up front uh, you know, you look at their big names up front, like Logan Couture, Vander Kane, Timo Meyer, guys like that. They're obviously good players and, and are going to produce. But then when you get down past their top two lines, you start looking at, at players that, you know, are borderline NHLers at all um, or much older. Like they brought back Patrick Marlowe, but he's 41 at this point. They brought back Matt Nieto, who's been a career fourth liner. Um, guys like Dylan Gambrell, Anti Suomela, like it, it, it's, it's not bad, but it's not a, a deep lineup when you compare it to a lot of other lineups around the NHL. And then when you get outside of of these guys who are listed as part of the Sharks, if, if people start, you know, getting injured or they have guys missing games and you look at what they have down in the minors, it, there's just not a whole lot there. So uh, I think depth is definitely going to be one of the biggest issues for this team. Yeah. Um, when I first went in this, I kind of maybe thought they might have had a chance. But as we got talking about it before the video, um, yeah, let's talk about some of the moves. First of all, the Ryan Donato move. What did you think of that? Uh, I, I can't personally not a Ryan Donato fan at all. I could not stand him when he was in Boston. Um, he he doesn't do anything defensively. He's pretty much a shot, and that's it. And that's if he can score, which he hasn't really put up huge scoring numbers. He's a guy that's been healthy, scratched a lot, and is now on his third NHL team already at 24 years old. He's been to Boston, from Boston to Minnesota, now to San Jose. And there's just, I'm not a big Donato fan at all. Um, and that That's a move I'm not really sure why they went out. Obviously, they were trying to get younger, and they were looking for somebody with some offensive upside. But there's just two many issues in his game for my liking. He's not a well-rounded player at all, and I really don't think he's going to make them that much better. Yeah, it kind of screams uh, desperation, doesn't it? Uh, I know they're trying to get younger, and he's only 24. Uh, so I'm guessing they figured that uh, oh, what's the coach's la- – the whole time you're talking, I'm trying to remember their coach's name now. He used to coach for Florida, and now he's in San Jose. Bob Bugner. Bugner, right. Uh, Bob Boudner, I guess they figure Bob Boudner will get, can can find a way to get the best out of this kid. Um, I actually like Bob Boudner. Um, I think that he has done he did very well with this team when he moved uh, when they did the coach transition last year. Um, but he does seem to he's only 24 years old and he's on his third team already. Uh, that is something to uh, that's a red flag, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's like, it, I mean, you, it's hard to compare him as a second round pick to a top five pick like Alex Galchenyuk, but it's the same sort of idea as Galchenyuk where he's just been passed around to team to team and can't stick anywhere. And usually those guys don't end up amounting to what they're supposed to long term. Yeah, very seldom do they turn their careers around at 24 years old when they've been thrown or bantied about like that. 
Um, there are some instances where it did work out, but far more where it didn't. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. And especially when you're going to have to, looks like they're going to have to, and this is where the depth problem comes in, they're going to have to use him in their top six. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's not what you want. Is he, he, he is not a proven top six player by any stretch uh, at this point. So that's, that's, again, that's kind of a reach. Yeah, and they're bringing in like Patrick Marlowe uh, from Pittsburgh, who really didn't show well last year at 40 years old. Uh, I don't see him showing well at 41. And you pretty much have to peg him in here for the third line now. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand that Patrick Marlowe is a Sharks legend and he's been one of the best players for the past 20 years in the NHL, but he he's 41 years old. He's not, you know, you're not getting 2010 Patrick Marlowe back here. Like, th this is a player who barely, even at this point, but really belongs in an NHL lineup. Um, you look at what he did last season, um, you know, he he had 11 goals in total last year. I mean, this is a guy who is not what he used to be, and it's certainly not his fault. It's an age thing. But when, when you bring back a guy like that to just kind of fill the roster, um, that that's not a great position to be in if you're the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, I would say so. And I guess the next uh, and the, the worst part about it, and I, I'm going to be sharing this with San Jose Sharks fans. I'm going to try to find a positive spin here, guys. I swear to God. But uh, the then they also only have $2.5 million cap space with this roster. So no depth and not really much of a way to get some depth still uh, as well. Um, so let's go to their defense. Aaron. Are you surprised that they didn't try to find a way to add to this defense this year? Uh, am I surprised? No, because they don't have any money to do it. Um, they're, they're paying their top players. Just they're, they're, they've, they've put all their money into their top players. And what that does is it locks up your top players to long-term contracts, but what that also does is completely handcuffs you in every other way where you can't add depth to the lineup. And if those top players don't work out or start having injury problems or start declining, all of a sudden you're in big, big trouble. And I think that's what happened with San Jose last year. And you look at this defense, Eric Carlson's making 11 and a half per year. Brent Burns is making 8 million per year. And Mark Edward Vlasic is making 7 million per year. So if you add that up, that's $26.5 million out of an 81.5 million salary cap spent on three defensemen. Three yeah. guys taking up twenty six and a half million on your back end. That leaves, you know, th their other three defensemen to be in the lineup are are Redeem Simic, Mario Ferraro, and Jacob Middleton. They yeah. have no or depth on the back end because so much money is spent on those top three guys. And then you have Carlson, who has major injury problems every year. You have Brent Burns, who's 35. And you have Vlasic, who is a shell of the player that he used to be. And that's the big thing. I, I totally am with you on that. It's not even the money that they spent. It's that you're not getting value on the no. money. I mean, Carlson is going to go down in the Hall of Fame. He's a Hall of Famer, and he still has a lot to give, I personally think, if you can get over the injury problems. But at $11.5 million, that was absurd. It's that just was ridiculous. That was an absurd amount of money to give to him in, this, in what he was producing at that time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, just a ridiculous contract, and it goes on and on and on. I mean, he he's signed all the way through as far as cap friendly goes. And yeah, Burns, for eternity, yeah. Brent Burns <laughs> is thirty five and still has five years left on his deal, and Vlasic is thirty three and still has six years left on his deal. And when you look at the Ford Group, uh, Logan Couture is thirty one. And his contract goes as far as cap friendly goes. Evander Kane's 29 and still has five years left on his deal. I mean, these long term big money contracts are coming back to really bite the San Jose Sharks. So true. This team in another, because since this is talking about the future, this team in another five years 
Ugh. could be in just an absolute disaster of a team. They'll be. Uh, this could go. This could be a de- like one of those decade long rebuilds that just never go on and on and on. They're definitely going to be re- rebuilding sooner rather than later with the age of these guys. If they could find people to take these contracts, that's the problem. Is who's I don't, is anybody going to take Eric Carlson's contract really? Like no or chance. Brent Burns or anything like that. Uh, anyways, let's get to another move that they made. Uh, and I'm gonna this will be a bright side for me, not necessarily because of the player, but because of the. Uh, Martin Jones, uh, mm-hmm. geez, always looks like he's going to be a great defenseman until you put him on the ice <laughs> and, and Devin Dubnik, they bring him from Minnesota. What, uh, what did you think of that idea move? Well, uh, I, I thought it was interesting. Um, Devin Dubnik had a horrible year last year with Minnesota. His numbers were terrible, but Devin Dubnik shown that he can be a, a really solid goalie and, and at times has been one of the better goalies in the league. And I, I really feel like last year was just a, a lousy season for Dubnik. And I think a change of scenery in a new team might be a really good thing for him. So I actually like Dubnik to, to be a, a you know solid 1B to Martin Jones. I'm not a huge Martin Jones fan, never have been. Um, he, he's always underachieved in my opinion, compared to what the expectations were for him. Um, but they did bring in Evgeny Nabokov to be the goaltending coach. And we saw signs of that helping very, very quickly in San Jose. And Jones certainly, I think was better at, towards the end of the year than he started the season without a doubt last year. And Dubnik, I think, can have a bounce back year. He's he's 34. He's in his mid-30s now. I wouldn't sign him to a five-year deal or anything like that. But we've seen goaltenders play well up in, up into their late 30s, and it's kind of a position where, you know, guys like Pecorine and, and Henrik Lundqvist are, are in their late 30s now, and they're still producing at a decent level. And so I, I wouldn't worry too much about Dubnik. You know, he's only got a year left on his contract anyway. So if they want to move on from him after this coming season, um, that's always an option. But I think he'll be a nice addition to go along with Martin Jones. And I honestly think there's a chance Dubnik ends up the starter there and, and Jones kind of gets pushed to the 1B. Because um, I think Dubnik can have a bounce back year. And I'm, like I said, not a huge fan of Martin Jones. Yeah, you, I was thinking that maybe I might find something here that we disagree with because a lot of people are not big on Dubnik, but no, of course, we agree again. Uh, Devin Dubnik uh, did. Another thing is Devin Dubnik went through some terrible personal problems in the past two years. His wife has had an illness and stuff like that that has been weighing him down as well. And it seems like, for me anyways, I feel like I'm just rooting for Devin Dubnik. I uh, mm-hmm. He he played for the Oilers. I'm an I'm an Oilers fan, as you as you know, and uh, I had the opportunity to kind of see him in a social environment a few times. And the guy is just like he's one of those guys that um, has an energy about him that you just can't help but like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, you're you're rooting for him, especially after going through those issues and everything else that went on there. And with as far as Nabokov, Nabokov did do huge things for Martin Jones last year. Uh, maybe if there's any disagreement here is I have a feeling that Nabokov can keep on improving Martin Jones to be what everybody maybe expected him to be this year. And they could have a really good one-two combination. This might be this. This is probably to me anyways, the strength of their lineup uh, could be the strength of their lineup, but it's only because of Nabokov was there because before that, when they had Dell and Jones, it was a disaster too, Right. Yeah, I mean, their goaltending has been inconsistent, to say the least, over the last few years. And last year was not a good season for Martin Jones at all. So let's say that San Jose goes and uh, gets to the trade deadline. And like last year, they're completely out of it. Um, You would have to think that they would be sellers at the deadline here. Is there are there players you think they can get any value from here that you would uh, not want to keep for basically what we agree that they got to be looking at a rebuild here soon? 
Are there players you think they could could get some get some value for? Uh, I their their contracts are so big that I think it's going to be hard to move a lot of these guys. And some of these guys, they're not going to want to move. Like a guy like Timo Meyer isn't going anywhere. He's making $6 right. million a year, but he's 24 years old. He's a guy that they're building around. Yeah. He's not going to go anywhere. Um, Kevin LeBanc just signed a four-year deal. He's 25. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Um, Tom, to, uh, to, Tomas Hurdles, another guy that's 27. Again, I don't think they're looking to move him. The guys that you would, you know, maybe want to move are guys like Vlasic or maybe Evander Kane, but their contracts are so big that I don't think you're going to be able to find a trade partner for it. Logan Couture, I don't think they're going to move. He's a captain. He's He's a lifelong shark. I don't think he's going anywhere. And even if you wanted to move him, he's making eight million a year f- for the next, you know, what six years, seven years. Like, it, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to move that contract. So they're kind of in a tight spot here, where a lot of these big contracts, they are going to really have a problem getting rid of if they want to get rid of them, or they're just going to have to stick with these guys. Well, yeah, I think they could be backed into a corner. I think the Evander King contract could have some value, uh, especially when it comes to playoff time. He has the type of game that there could be somebody out there that would be able to fit him in in the long term or move things, shuffle them around. Everybody loves Logan Couture uh, as a player, but again, is he gonna, is Logan Couture a first-line center on most teams out there, really? Uh, I, I, he certainly would be a uh, high level second line center. I think for a lot of teams, he, he'd be a first liner, but it would, it would depend on who, where he was going. Um, I mean, if, if you have him as your second line center, you've got a heck of a one, two punch down the middle. Right. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't see the Sharks getting rid of him. I just think he, he's the kind of guy that, you know, that they just hope they keep and he's a captain and. I just don't think they really have any interest in moving him. Yeah, maybe they don't. But, I mean, at the same time, when you look at the direness of this future here, I mean, when you if you've got guys like Vlasic, at, who's already fallen off quite a bit in a couple of years, uh, Brent Burns can't – I mean, he is incredible how much he's kept up at 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's going to start falling off just has to, right? And then Eric Carlson with the injury problems. I don't know. Somewhere along the line, they may just have to bite the bullet and take whatever value they can for their veterans and uh, and and start bringing young players in and, and hope that as these Carlson contracts and stuff get closer to their ending that they can buy some out or, or something like that. But it's a, it's a lineup that is in dire need of a lot of things and mm-hmm. not much money to acquire anything and a very difficult one to rebuild. So oh, my final thing, we'll, we'll, we'll talk then about uh, Wilson has been there for a very long time. Yes. He almost brought him to a cup. And in a lot of ways, he's done a lot of great things in San Jose. Is Wilson's time... Do you, is is it possible that Wilson's time in San Jose might be might be might be getting a little ripe? Yeah, I, I definitely think that that's a possibility, especially if they have another season this year where they're well out of the playoff picture. And like, I, I can't see this team being as bad as they were last season. I don't think they should be a last place team. There's there's too much, you know, there's too much top end talent there at the top of their lineup with you know all these guys we've been talking about that they're paying so much money to if those guys can stay healthy they're going to be a better team than they were last season but if they're still out of the playoffs i i think there's going to be definitely some talk about uh, you know maybe going in a different direction but i think that's something that would have to be discussed at uh, at an ownership level or a higher hockey operations level where you know, you can say, listen, Doug Wilson has done a tremendous job with this team. He's made us into a, a perennial contender. Now things are starting to go the other way. And they can say, you know, what, Doug Wilson's our guy and we're going to stick with him. And we know that a rebuild's probably coming and we'll stick with him through that. Or 
they they might say it's time to get a new a new face in here a new a new gm and someone kind of a fresh blood in there for the rebuild but i think no matter what way you look at it there's a rebuild coming in san jose and whether wilson stays through that and wants to be a part of that or if he wants to move on and go somewhere else that's kind of a discussion to be had between him and the ownership of the sharks yeah, and that led me to the other possibility is I, I, I quite often wonder, like, contracts like uh, Carlson, if that was really Wilson in that, that, that sounds like possibly an ownership saying, look, we want this marquee player, sign mm-hmm. him whatever you can, because it just, Wilson's too smart of a guy. He did a lot of things that were very difficult to do when Thornton didn't want to uh Nix is no trade clause, if you remember that. Like, there was mm-hmm. a time there when Marlowe and they took the captaincy away and all of that stuff like that. But somehow he was able to navigate around that and keep them almost, you know, making it to the finals, uh, almost winning a cup. Um, and very, very difficult situation. I thought he did very well. I just find it very hard to believe that it was that it was Wilson that came up with the idea to give Carlson $11.5 million for that long. Um, I think maybe a lot of this might have more to do with what – maybe the ownership has their fingers in the pie a little more than they should be. But uh, So if that's the case, maybe Wilson is saved. But if it's not the case, I think an ownership group would look at this roster and eventually go, okay, it's time to get a new perspective. Uh, and maybe, maybe mm-hmm. Wilson is on his way out. Well, boys and girls – that's our full 42. Uh, looks like we're looking at the San Jose Sharks, say Sharks to not make the playoffs next year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very yep. unlikely. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, in the 7 8, uh, may, maybe just barely make miss the playoffs. And that's never what you want, right? <laughs> yeah, no. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem with this roster, is it's one of those rosters that are just going to barely miss the playoffs. I, Minnesota, you know, there are teams like that. Uh, the way Buffalo has set themselves up this year is probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, those teams never seem to get anywhere. And that's what I have a hard time with uh, San Jose. It's that never going to get better and rebuilding is going to be very tough to do. And those uh, just making the playoff drafting spots that you get in the 13, 14, 15 slots. Yeah. Well, that's our full 42, boys and girls. Thank you very much, John, for coming in here. You're always awesome at bringing the pearls. We love it. Um, that We will be – John, by the way, is going to be doing a weekly show now. Tell them about that weekly show there for the Boston Bruins. There. Yeah, I just, uh, just signed on to do a weekly Bruins show that's going to be starting up in January. And uh, it's basically just all, all Bruins news and whatever is big happening around the Boston Bruins that week. Um, and it, it's going to be probably but somewhere between an hour, hour and a half each week of just, you know, all, all the Bruins discussion going there. And the, the channel it's going to be on on YouTube is called B, uh, B and Black and Gold Weekly or BNG Weekly uh, for short. Nice. And then, of course, we're both part of www.steelflyers.com. That's exciting. Coming up probably in January here, we'll be doing live feeds through there, the All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of exciting stuff. John, if you look on his stuff, has already did some precursor stuff with Steel, and Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be doing that as well. We are so excited. You guys are just absolutely going to love it. But thanks, John, for coming in. And thanks, everybody, for listening in. Uh, If you could uh, hit that subscribe and the bell, it really helps the channel a lot, helps us uh, progress and grow, and uh, just makes things – it makes you feel better. (laughs) Have a great day. Lots of love to you.